Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Tisha's Two Minute Tips. This week we're talking about how to still do business when the government is shut down. If you're in the private sector, what I'm seeing is my clientele is not able to get their small business loans approved for them to purchase property, acquire equipment, or even another line of business. What happens is their small business loan is pending approval, the government shuts down, and then we can't finish the deal because we can't fund the transaction. And some of you out there are holding off on your business deals until the government reopens, but then you're anxious that you're losing a particular unique business opportunity. But we have a legal workaround. It's called a force majeure provision in your legal agreements. A force majeure provision is a common contractual clause that basically says where the parties to the contract agree that they don't have to perform certain obligations under the contract if circumstances happen that are beyond the party's control. Or the force majeure clause can shift the risk in the event of a particular circumstance. Now, normally this deals with acts of God, such as flood or fire, but a force majeure provision can also include government actions, including a government shutdown. For example, let's say you entered into an agreement to purchase a particular piece of property for $2 million in the next 30 days. And your business had planned to secure funding with a small business loan. And let's just say that the day before your loan was going to be submitted for approval. The government shuts down and there's no end in sight. You can't get your loan approved, but you're contractually obligated to close the transaction in the next 30 days. A force majeure clause gives you a legal excuse not to finish the transaction because of a circumstance beyond both parties control. Sometimes this is called a contingency provision, but it functions the same way as a force majeure clause that you're legally excused from performing because of some circumstance that's beyond your control. So let's say you're waiting for the government to reopen and you got your eye on a particular piece of property and you don't want to lose that opportunity to another buyer. You could still enter into a legal agreement that the seller is going to allow you to purchase the land once funding is procured. And one more tip for today, creating a truly protective force majeure clause is a bit of an art and a science. If you draft your force majeure clause narrowly to only cover certain circumstances, you run the risk of forgetting something and precluding a valid legal excuse. On the other hand, if you draft your force majeure clause in a way that's very, very broad to cover infinite possible scenarios, you run the risk of your force majeure clause being misinterpreted and then not applying to the situation at hand. This happens especially in legal battles. Generally, if you end up in a courtroom, a judge will interpret a broad force majeure clause in one of two ways. And you should know about this before you actually put it into your legal agreement. The best thing to do is to tailor your force majeure clause to fit your specific situation. In other words, sometimes downloading a form force majeure clause off the internet ends up doing you more harm than good. If you need help crafting a solid and enforceable force majeure provision, let us help you. Click the link below for more information. I hope you found this thought provoking and helpful. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.